Morning Church. We welcome you to this festival mass as we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome those who are here physically and also those joining us virtually across the world and we pray that it may be a joyful and blessed and holy celebration that will uplift and inspire all of us. In a particular way, we give thanks for the orchestra and the choir who will be singing this Schubert Mass for us. And, of course, to the glory of God. The Lord be with you. And Kosi Mayi Banani. Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing good news of great joy for all people. To you, to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Please be seated. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Zechariah promised that in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. It has come to the light of Christ that has risen for the forgiveness of our sins and make our confession and penitence and faith. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. We say together, O Christ, light of the world, Born. Glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Hebrews, Hebrews 1, verses 1 to 4. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways, by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Hear the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him no one, no one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of the people. The light that shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone who was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and lived amongst us. And we have seen His glory, the glory of, as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of Christ. speak in the name of God's beloved. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. Earlier this morning, a person sent me a poem called African Christmas, and I think it speaks very wonderfully into one of the ways of beingness, and it's called our African Christmas. In Africa, it's Christmas, and there's no mistletoe, no holly and no reindeer, no robin in the snow. But there's a red poinsettia and bright flamboyant too and gentle-eyed impala to see our godchild through. In Africa, it's Christmas and Christmas beetles sing throughout the town and country for our newborn king. In Africa, the sky is alight. Peace on earth and goodwill to all of us on this night. Around our glowing campfires come join our braai, our barbecue, and may the joys of Christmas ever be with you. In Africa, it's Christmas, and Christmas beetles sing throughout the town and country for our newborn king. 
And so may your South African Christmas be filled with love and peace and goodwill to everyone who crosses your path. So that is an aspect of the Christmas incarnation within our context and on our continent. And then there's another aspect of being born into the flesh, our flesh, our lower nature, as in one of the Pauline letters we are described, that portion of our beingness, our tendency to fall short of loving God gloriously and wonderfully. And it is perhaps illustrated in an incident that happened this morning at about five o'clock. A person, a fellow African, from what I understand, from a, from a country north of here, um, came into a conflict with the security guard and the consequence of that is in the altercation the one fellow grabbed a brick and sailed it through the lower window of what we call the Joe Eckstein Memorial in the vicinity of the crib. And when I arrived here, the verger pointed out the brick was still half stuck. And this gentleman is at present moment in Caledon Square. A Danish theologian by name of Niels Gregerson in 2001 coined the term, and I quote, deep incarnation. And a fellow theologian by the name of Elizabeth Johnson explains it in the following way, that the deep incarnation is a radical divine reach into the very tissue of biological existence. Born of a woman and the Hebrew gene pool, Jesus of Nazareth, was a creature of earth, a complex unit of minerals and fluids, an item in the carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen cycles, a moment in the biological evolution of this planet. And like all human beings, he carried within himself the signature of the supernovas and the geology and the life history of this earth. He carried within himself the signature of the supernovas and the geology and life history of this earth. And this unnamed man who threw a brick at this cathedral window, when I thought about it later, coming back from the deanery in anticipation of the service, there is an African proverb that says, a child will burn down a village to feel its warmth. And I wonder what muted anger has been harbored in the flesh and the beingness, the supernova illustration of our humanity pertains also to this man who for whatever reason found himself south of every way that he has ever existed. And whatever life had been in his home country, likewise it was not satisfied. And what frustration causes him to respond in the flesh that is divine. And what John so wonderfully explains is that the divine became part of us. One of our African saints and Athanasius says that, and I, I, I paraphrase it a bit, he says that the divine God became man, became human, so that the human can become divine. But what Genesis says in chapter 1, that when God created Adam from the earth, from the constellation of all that has been made out of creation, out of that 
galaxy of stars that is embedded in the earth when God shaped human form in his own image God breathed his spirit and the Hebrew is Ruach the feminine spirit and man became a living being it is the spirit of God the Ruach that animates us and that we are both male and female we are masculine and feminine and we are wonderfully divine in our earthiness and in our fleshedness that Jesus came to celebrate and as beautiful as the manger scene is depicted at the back of the church that rock that almost went through that it was embedded in the, on the glass reminds us of the violence of the time in which Jesus was born in the reign of Quirinius the governor that had oversight of the Holy Land and of Syria and the fact that Joseph had to travel from wherever he was in Nazareth with his young bride pregnant as she was that he was of David's lineage he was royalty he was of that clan that would have had a particular greeting and yet this man of princely beingness could not find a place for this emerging family of his and Christ was born homeless in a rough stable and there was nothing gorgeous or warm didn't smell of Aramis as Bob might be smelling like on the Sunday morning as a Christmas present whatever perfume, perfume we might have received it was just that and that's where the divine came in the shallow end of life and there is the baby mama in the person of Mary I'm sure Joseph would still probably had a niggling doubt about who's your daddy when he looked at baby Jesus that conflict was already probably there and it would surface occasionally probably in the relationship but it is in this perfect imperfection that the divine becomes part of us and which makes it possible for us to be loving, forgiving because the divine within us is that which makes for the north star of conscience an ability to be non-judgmental of the brother that took a brick and threw it through the cathedral window and to recognize him as still as one of us who took a wrong turn in a moment a wrong note says Miles Davis in response to one of his jazz band members I think it was Herbie Hancock and you know in jazz improvisation the chord is played and then it's the note that is left is for the other musician to come and improvise upon and there wasn't such a nice note that the pianist ended and then later on when he apologized Miles Davis said to him it's not the note that you play that's the wrong note it's a note you play afterwards that makes it right or wrong and so the divine in us on this Christmas day makes it possible for us to make the right choices and not be defeated by the wrong notes that we play so wonderfully almost every day of our loved life as fathers as parents as people who are in places of employ, as people that are struggling to survive, we play the wrong note, but the divine in us makes it possible for us to rally forth and to be that which makes us beautiful. And today we are aware that one of the bold warriors of laughter and of prophecy and of faith 
Desmond and Pilo Tutu is very ill. And as his voice has gone quiet, the words that he has spoken finds greater resonance in times such as the way and where we are living. And Father Desmond said, we may be surprised at the people we find in heaven. God has a soft spot for sinners. His standards are quite low. And that's where we find ourselves. Born of flesh, people within a culture and in a history, the wonderfully forgiven. And that's what we claim this day. And that is what Christmas makes possible. Amen.
And so on this Christmas day, as we look back on the year that has been, mindful that it has been on the 21st of this week, the summer solstice, as we move forward in an ever-evolving season, we look back on what we'd left behind that where we've been negligent and as we fly on forward into the new year we seek the ways that make for gratitude in our lives and in this examen of conscience of will and of intention, we approach this sacrament of our only begotten Son in the person of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And so, Father, as sick, we come to the position of life as unclean to the fountain of mercy and as blind to the light of eternal splendor as needy to the Lord of heaven and earth and as naked to the King of glory merciful Father accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son and our Saviour Jesus Christ, our brother. Amen. Our presider, Father Michael, is very keen that I share notices with you. And so I say, Father, I love you. And... Um, we also extend that love to all gathered here, those who have traveled from, from further than we can imagine, beyond the Lisbic, other parts of Mzansi, and from the land of Boris. And we're glad that uh, those who were able to travel, that you arrived here, and we pray that you will be COVID-free and Africa-friendly when you leave our shores, both our city and our international borders. Our service on Sunday, which is tomorrow, there'll be one service, and that will be 9.30 in the morning, and it will be a said mass. So to all of you, your loved ones and your family, on behalf of the church wardens, Catherine de Jong and Arthur Martin, and our Archbishop and Bishop Joshua, I wish you a most blessed and Merry Christmas. Thank you. Please stand. Our Savior Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us it becomes the cup of salvation. It is right and indeed our duty and joy, Lord and Heavenly Father, God Almighty and Eternal, always and everywhere to give thanks through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, because through him you have created everything from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have delivered us from the slavery of sin when you gave him to be born as man and to die and to, on the cross and to rise again for us. Through him you have claimed us as your own people when you enthroned him with you in heaven and through him sent out your Holy Spirit, the giver of life. And now we give you thanks because by the power of the Holy Spirit he took our nature upon him and was born of the Virgin Mary, his mother, that being himself without sin, he might make us clean from all sin. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we acclaim you and declare the greatness of your glory. We praise you now and forever, singing.
Hear us, Father, through your Son, Christ our Lord, through him accept our offering of thanks and praise, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, so that they may be to us his body and his blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So too after supper he took the cup, and when he had given you thanks, he gave it to, to them, saying, Drink of it all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Holy Father, with these your gifts, we, your people, celebrate before you the one perfect sacrifice of Christ our Lord, his rising from the dead and his ascending to the glory of heaven. Gracious Lord, accept us and him unworthy though we are, so that we who share in the body and blood of your Son may be made one with all your people of this and every age. Grant that as we await the coming of Christ our Savior and the glory and triumph of his kingdom, we may daily grow into his likeness, with whom and in whom and through whom, by the power of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be given to you, Almighty Father, by the whole company of earth and heaven, throughout all ages, now and forever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father Amen. in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ?
we say together, we do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We're not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Behold who we are. May we become what we receive. Father Michael will now lead us in the act of spiritual communion, especially for those who are joining us virtually. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, refresh me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me never be separated from you. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you. And with your saints, I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. on the edge of the uh, altar area.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. God's mercy endures forever. God of grace and glory, and the bread of heaven and the cup of eternal life, with which you have blessed our earthly festival, the holy child of Bethlehem has come to be born in us. May his dwelling in us set ablaze our hearts to shine forth in our words and deeds. Through him whom we come to worship and adore, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. We say together, Father Almighty, Almighty, we offer ourselves, offer ourselves to, to you as a living sacrifice. In Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord, send us out into the world the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. We have been greatly blessed today by this uh, festival ma mass number two in G major by Franz Schubert, led so beautifully by St. George's Cathedral Chamber Choir and Chamber Orchestra with Rachel uh, Pretorius on soprano, Arthur Swan, the tenor, Abonga C. Taylor on bass, the orchestra led by Amin Shaw, conducted by Grant Bresler and of course supported by the Association of the Friends of St. George's Cathedral. I think it's time to acknowledge them. May the celebration of Christ's birth make you sing with joy like the angels, seek him out in faith like the shepherds, and like the wise men, offer him the worship and loyalty of your hearts, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.